Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Love Hour Love Cast. I'm your host, Miss Kevin Stage, and I am joined, as always, by my husband and co-host, the Kevin Stage. We don't have mics today. Imagine my mic was here. Imagine <laughs> Mike was here. Uh, the Kevin Stage. Wow. Was it that loud, Josh? Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was gonna be that yeah, loud. <laughs> So we're kind of in this like uh, impromptu studio setup because we are on vacation. Vacation, but we did not miss an we episode. We did not miss an episode. We have been going strong since like the middle of December. Yes, we've been Which doing is great. Quite that long and strong. Yeah, that's all right. Shout out to Blue Chew. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are on vacation. So we're filming this episode. You see the beautiful. Pacific Ocean behind us. I just watched an episode of Righteous and Ratchet in, jo- in Joshua. Uh, Doughboy called it the Atlantic. It's not. He had a 50 50 chance of being right. Yeah. I mean, so, there's wait, only two oceans connected to the United States. Yeah, but you definitely should have gone with Pacific. I know, Pacific We're still on the West. Exactly. He didn't think about that? At the very least, you should have gone with Pacific. <sighs> So anyway, we are going to, um, oh, if you're new here, thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Kevin. My name is Kevin. <laughs> my name is not Kevin. His name is Kevin. My name is Melissa. Uh, we consider ourselves to be marriage champions. We are not counselors, therapists, or anything like that. Um, we are simply here to share and draw on our personal experiences, our own insights, and those type of things um, through the tenure of our marriage mm-hmm. we have been married for countless years 15, but if we were to count them it'd be 15 this june 15 years in june <laughs> um so yeah we just want to throw that disclaimer out but we always like to start with something fun because sometimes we can get a little heavy a little deep mm-hmm. over here in the love hour and that is with the that or this lower what is it that or this with kevin don't act like you don't know what it is just because you didn't win you put the poll out you lost fair square embrace it i know that or this with kevin list and kevin will come up with the question okay are you ready i'm ready would you rather have your food always a little too salty or always a little unseasoned okay so this is a good question and a little too salty or a little unsweetened or like yeah or unseasoned not sweetened unseasoned okay so like always feel like man that was just like two clicks too much salt or always like god two clicks of salt would have made this perfect Okay, so just two clicks. Okay, so is um, are there health? No okay, health so, benefit. No sodium thing. Is that no what? No sodium. Yeah, because I can force myself to like food that's unseasoned, because mm-hmm. I try to like be aware that I'm knocking on the door of forty, so I need to be. You knocking on the door of thirty six. Which is pretty close to forty, so I need to be mindful of like my body. You're closer to my, fifty than you are to twenty. How are you going to knock me talking about 40 and then go to 50? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then your arguments don't make sense. Um, so I always try to be mindful no, of like true. what I am putting in my body as far as like sodium content. And that. Yeah. So, there's no health benefits, just purely taste. There's no health benefits? Or there's or no, no health, health like consequences? Consequences, okay. no health consequences. Okay, then I would probably go, with, can I add salt? No. Also, even if it's unseasoned, I can't just add the no two salt. clicks manual. No, that's that would defeat the purpose if you could just add two clicks. Okay, it's then always prepared for you. Is it salty? This is so many questions right now. Is it <laughs> salty to the point you know when food is too salty, it also gets spicy? No, it's not spicy. No, it's I know it's not salty, but spicy. But you know when you over salt food, it's like yeah, and it gets you that. No, it's not that. It's just like three bites in, you'd be like, man. It's a lot of salt. It's edible. Okay, then I'm going to go with C. It's too salty then. Too salty? I think so. I think if it's just at a point of like, oh, I can still eat this, then it's okay. Because you've had food that's too salty, but you're still able to do it. But not if it's too, too salty, then it's it's not edible. But you're saying it's edible salty. Yeah, it's just a little, it's a tweet. It's yeah, a, then my, that's not I, I would take unseasoned, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. When something's too salty... It's a lot. Everything I ate was too salty. Oh, is it everything I ate? Yeah, everything is a uh, little too salty. Oh, or a little yeah, unseasoned. then I am going unseasoned. I was thinking of like one specific meal for some reason. No, that'd be easy. Everything you eat is like, man, it's a little. Oh, yeah, I can't do every meal I eat. Yeah, because my, here's, here's how I thought about it. Okay. There's a lot of food I eat that's not salty at all that I can enjoy without 
salt. Yeah. Like chipotle I eat without salt, salad, a lot of soups I never sure, have to sure. add. And they're not necessarily seasoned well. Sure. Like a clam chowder, I don't add salt to. Um, so there's a lot of stuff, especially when you're eating like heavy vegetables. So you're adding stuff. salt to things that aren't even require salt? No, no. I'm saying, wait, you talking about in my life or in this no, hypothetical? No, in this hypothetical. No, it's already added. I know, but I'm saying a food that would naturally have salt, yes. it's also going to be too salty. Oh, well, Cheryl, this is too deep. I'm going with unseasoned. Well, I guess, no. I mean, I guess like cereal isn't something. Yeah. I don't know. We're going really deep for our I know. Unseasoned. Oatmeal. Unseasoned. Done. Okay. Okay. What's your answer? Unseasoned. I do unseasoned. Okay. Because I just, I had, um, when we were in Maui the other day, while we were in Maui, <laughs> I, um, they had Himalayan pink salt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is wild yeah. salty. Like so I put salt. way too much. Yeah. And I was just like. <sighs> you should have known, though, because the witcher colors were big. I know. I should have known big. from yeah. big crystals. Yeah. But sea salt has big crystals in kosher salt, and it don't be as. Uh, oh, yes, it does. You think so? Yes. That stuff gets really salty. So anyway, I didn't know. Luckily, I had a way more rice, and I, I I got the rice from other parts of the plate, and I was like, everybody got to get in on this. <laughs> but it was just a little too salty. That's where I got the idea from. Oh, okay. That, that was, was when question. we were in Maui, because we were in Maui the other We're day. no longer in Maui, people. No, in we're in Honolulu. We're in uh, on the island of Oahu. Oahu. And Honolulu. Humu, humu, nuku, okay, nuku, so nuku, while we are here, Moana. Uh, we won't keep nice. you long. We are going to talk about how to argue effectively. I think we just did a bonus episode on this, and some people were asking us to redo it. Actually, I got another request just the other day to redo the money episode. Is that the one we said um, was, this episode was trash? No, actually, I got it from someone else, but then she said that as well. All no, bonus- we said that in the episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm, I apologize. I We don't remember the bonus episodes we necessarily. We really don't. They're so old. Your brain really does not keep... I don't remember what we said, what we talked about. I know that I was tired. It was a different time for me during the filming those anyway, like mentally. Um, so listen. Explain. I'm sorry. During that time? Yeah, were you not that into it? I would, I felt like you were forcing me to do it. Absolutely. Well, that's what's going to come across is a forced, mm. like a forced smile. Like I'm smiling, but also you can tell like I don't, it's not genuine. Mm. And so, now how do you feel? I feel better. I'm not forced. Is that all you have? Are you trying to psychoanalyze me? No, nah, I just didn't think about no. that. I think I think a lot of people are like... Some people would call me a visionary. Knowing that Love I would be successful. You're so annoyed. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to argue effectively. Are you ready? Yes. Before you start, I saw a okay. really interesting thing about arguing effectively on Twitter. What did you see? This person said, when you are arguing with somebody, ask them, are they going to allow you a chance to... Uh, hear my perspective are you gonna ask the question are you gonna allow me a chance to hear my perspective or do you just want to say things mm. and i thought that was really valuable that is because good. sometimes people don't want to hear your perspective they, they just, just want to go i don't even know about venting when you're arguing they just i just want to go off on you sure like i know sometimes well, we've been argument, um and i you've been saying something and i'd be like okay like you be right. You're just waiting for a okay. like I no, and I'd be like, there's nothing else for me to say except you're right. Uh-huh. But you be like going, going, sure. going, going. Because at that point, you just want to get all your points out. Right. So it really is just an opportunity for you to shut up and hear me. Yeah, and then it comes across as if I don't care. But there's really like when you are dead wrong in an argument yeah. and you admit it, there's really not much. Yeah, more but you, you can't can... admit you're wrong too early. <laughs> Don't don't admit you're wrong too early because I want an opportunity to go through all the reasons why you're wrong. Oh, and if you say what you're matter, right at right? point one and I haven't got to like I have six points. So what should I say if you're right if you're if you're hitting me and I'm like, man, you're right. You're right. No, okay. you should say that just at the end of all my six points. Not uh, not after each no, point. No, no, not at the end. No, I, I need your interjection because otherwise it's gonna make me upset too because I feel like you're not listening. You can't, win. can't win. This was happening to me the other day, Josh. Well, Her and Candace were tag teaming me on a argument, and I was like, "Yep, yeah, you're right. That's you're my right, bad." You're right. Shut up! Stop talking. <laughs> exactly. So then, when I was quiet, like you don't have nothing to say, you're right. Here you go, say that again. <laughs> I don't. What can because, I say? Because it is you a, are right. It is a fine balance between. And there's nothing you can say about something you've already done. You can't go back and like. Undo it. Right. So when you're like, listen, all this stuff I've already said. Yeah, I see the point. 
won't happen again. And, and, and this is another thing. Yes, you know, because huh? that means I haven't gone through all, all my points. <laughs> you think that's it? Yes, and here's exactly. another reason you messed up. Exactly. Got it, got it. Hmm. Oh, by the way, you don't feel this. Okay. I don't I, know what uh, you want me to Let me go through my uh, PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Especially when we text, I'd be like, fam. And then if I just be quiet, you'd be like, oh, you think differently? I have no words that will stop this onslaught. No, you would, you know. So but anyway, keep that qu question. And that actually can be good for outside of marital conflict, that question. Oh, yeah, for sure. And work. I, I, I thought uh, when I read that, I was like, man, that could have been valuable for a lot of arguments. That's a lot. That's people a, just don't, they don't really yeah. want to hear your opinion. But it could throw somebody off too because they may not be ready like, hold on, I don't know. What it's going to be so off. hard for you to admit, yeah. I just want to really go off on you. I just want to go off, yeah. Because sometimes you do. Sometimes you really do just want to go. You just yes. need an opportunity to like get it all out and like word vomit. Yes. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready, baby. All right, so how to argue effectively. So before we get there, I wanted to talk about the reasons why arguments often escalate. Okay. Okay, point one. Uh, arguments all often escalate because of built-up emotions that lead to explosions. Oh, boy. I know this V well. Yes, I am oh, definitely guilty of... Oh, my gosh. Um, which is another aspect of my Just Say It campaign, allowing me the opportunity I to... I wish you would just say it. Um, say Because when you don't just say it early, when you say yeah. it, finally, and back in 06, you left the fridge yeah. open for three minutes. 06, uh-huh, you thought I forgot. Because you have like a running inventory of all the things. And what happens, I mean, we talked about this last year in the, in the Love Hour, but you start to create your own narratives. I saw this, actually, I don't actually know if I saw this or if I made it up you can see so much information you don't know what you heard or what child, you thought i don't know if i read <laughs> I it on a podcast it, called my mind or if i thought it myself <laughs> i really don't remember um but what i said was or what i wrote down is it's important to communicate otherwise you'll create problems that never existed yes and so that's also part of the built up emotion so you it's part of number one just saying it mm -hmm. on a consistent basis but also just relaying the so things that actually bother you and things that you you think are bothering Perfect imagine example. things this happened in our uh hotel room the other day what happened we were rushing to get ready to leave okay getting the boys clothes out of their suitcase i thought i had zipped the suitcase all the way but i had been in and out of it so many times i hadn't zipped oh zipped yeah, yeah. It, right all the clothes fall out melissa had all these outfits with the boys socks Shorts, underwear, socks. underwear or no socks underwear this is wrap socks underwear shorts top like and then you perfectly roll it up. rolled, so they had little uh, burrito wrap outfits for them. All they have to do is pre pick it up, pre-organized, so that way they don't have to ask me what shirt <laughs> she goes had with pre rolls. This. What for this goes with this? Where are my socks? Everything is like and the kids be like, I don't know where my stuff is. Yes, exactly. So anyway, I'm going ham trying to get us ready to catch this car because we are flying that day. I uh, go to move the suitcase. All the clothes fall out of the yeah. suitcase, and I'm talking about. All the pre-rolls out. There was guts everywhere. Okay. I'm picking this up. And Melissa goes, y'all don't care about none of my work. And I say, this was an accident. <laughs> That's not how it went down. You said, no. What happened? No. Mm -hmm. Joshua, <laughs> this is now an ASMR video. This is exactly what happened. And she never lets me tell the no, truth. I'm about to remind you how it went. Watch her lie. I, she did a lie. No. What happens is Kevin always lies on these stories to make himself look better. Of course I so do. So what happened was I was actually in the other room and I came to the front room and you said, Melissa, I didn't realize this bag was open. All the clothes flew out. I didn't just come in and say, y'all don't appreciate none of my oh, work. Yeah, yeah that, thank you. Then, how does that change anything? Because you made it seem like I just walked in and said that I didn't. You said that and in tongue and cheek, I said, y'all don't appreciate none of the work I do. Then you said, and I did say it in tongue in cheek. Then you said, I don't know if you mean this, the circumstance or if you mean like in general. And I said, <laughs> I don't mean, I'm being funny about this circumstance, but, but do I do this mean way. this in general. Yeah. That's not how you were about to present that story. Fight That's, me. I, I don't want domestic violence. My <laughs> way. But um, the point was sometimes in jest, we say some things we really felt. Yes. And we don't want to admit to that, but we be sneaking some little barbs in. But I admitted to it. You did. And I was really proud for you about being emotionally honest. 
Don't be trying to steal a mic. Emotionally mindset. honest is great. I ask JoJo that all the time. <laughs> yes, you try to bully uh, Joshua into I being did. emotionally honest. I did, he said honest. he's being emotionally honest. But you be trying to bully people into what you believe is their emotional honesty. That's true. Which is another but when whole he said other that, word. What? When you try to force people, you try to make people's honesty be what you believe it should That's be. That's absolutely instead true. Instead of not believing what, you do that to me. Instead of believing, and I used to say, take me at my word. Sit. Take me at my word. If I say this, this is what I mean. But you be like, I ain't what you mean. Mm-hmm. That's true about me. That's all you got to say? Say yes. more about yeah. how it's true. <laughs> I'm not saying nothing else. You're not saying nothing else. I do want you to talk more about your weight loss journey that you're on with um, Doughboy. How is it going? Are you being emotionally honest there? Well, I've been doing great. I... Um, my thing that I do that most people don't do, uh, I, I don't make drastic changes. Mm-hmm. I, I do the things that are sustainable. I ain't going to hold you, though. My back's been hurting for the last three days. And also, my feet have been broken. Like, when I go to stand up to work out, my feet say, but you're in Hawaii. <laughs> Lay down. So, maybe it's a mind issue. But for the most part, I've been eating right consistently and working out consistently. And I'm seeing the results. I think I'm down eight pounds. Oh, that's great. And I probably won't lose any weight this week. Well, I, this is expected. Get, this is expected. This is expected because I'm in Hawaii. I'm eating French toast for breakfast. So but, we want to talk about Noom. Yes. Um, who is, Noom is super dope. Su- Noom is super dope. They are um, one of our sponsors for the week. And we want to say thank you, of course, to all of our sponsors who um, made this episode possible. Noom being one of them. And what they do, which actually is really great and part of the reasons I wanted to partner with them, is that they look at your health and weight loss as a holistic approach. Yeah. So it's not just about losing the weight, but it's also about your mentality. Yes, so which they is work the on most you. important you, It's part. so important to work on yourself from the inside and the outside. Yes. Even more so the inside yes. than the outside. So what they recognize is that sticking to a weight loss plan can be hard, um, especially when you don't know how to handle your thoughts and the obstacles and those things, your inner thoughts that can be counterproductive to what you're trying to do right. on the outside. So they help you like navigate that, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. So what you do is you go to um, Noom and you fill out a like survey. It doesn't take long, maybe 30, 45 seconds. And then they hook you, hook you up with a goal specialist. And this is the person that's going to help you change your behaviors, which I think is great. I want to show you really quickly. This is their app. This is my group coach. You guys probably can't see it. But what you what it allows you to do is like talk to them directly. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah. I really, I don't know. I thought it was very cool. They. Uh, this is another thing that's really neat. They allow you to track your progress on your weight on here. And because I like check boxes, that's like super cool to me. So you can track like, this is where I started. This is the weight that I've lost. Help you along the way. You get it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so anyway, they have recipes in here. I actually recorded what I ate today. I'm not going to show you guys because you probably can't Six see. Six bites of bacon. I ate most of my plate. Three sips of water. <laughs> but you can uh, record. You can record what and you ate. And that's one grain, not So you can see um, your calorie <laughs> intake and all of that. Again, really, really cool. You talk to your um, goal specialist every single day. Well, Monday through Thursday during business hours, they're available to you. Um, so, yeah, if you're interested in um, weight loss, it's still the beginning of the year-ish. You're still working on your weight loss goals. You're still working on your summer body goals. Go to Noom. They can help you out. So Noom is designed for results. It's out with the old habits, in with the new. Sign up for your trial at Noom.com slash love hour. That's Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash love hour. Uh, what do you have to lose? Visit Noom.com slash love hour to start your trial today. Again, that's Noom.com slash love hour. Start losing weight for good. And that's Noom like noon but with an M. So N-O-O-M dot com slash love hour. All right. Okay. What other things? Did you finish that? Uh, Built up emotions? Built up emotions? Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Built up emotions can lead to explosions. Oh, you need to finish that. You be built up emotion. Hello? I don't I'm actually, but that's like literally what I am working on is I'm taking this hat off. I'm still on vacation, y'all, but that hat's making me hot. Um, You're already hot in my eyes. Um... The the part of my just say it campaign helps with that as well yes. because I am starting to be 
um, more honest about what I'm feeling and make not only honest but also making sure I'm communicating that with you because what you don't want again is to have that build up over time and then you have an explosion and by the time you have an explosion you end up saying things um, that you don't mean and the trouble with that is you can't take that stuff back yes so once it's said and it's out there it's said and it's out and there and those words just ring in your ears like when Beth said I was between just about which to anxiety say, attack man and Randall was like Okay, bye. Yeah, me and Kevin both were like. <laughs> but that what happens. Like, you start off. Ooh, ooh, Kevin kicked it. I know it is. You too. start off trying to get your point across, but then sometimes when you argue, you want to hurt that other person. Yes. Like, you want to hurt their feelings. You want them because you feel like you've been hurt. Right. And uh, and the reason that I want you to say stuff, because I know you, uh, your, your thought process was you did not want to be um, nagging. Yes. Right? But when you don't say anything, the other person ends up making a mistake or what you deem as a mistake over and over. Sure. Because they're unaware this bothers you. So now you start to, like you were talking about the narrative, you start to feel like they're doing this on purpose because in your mind, you this has bothered you. I was thinking about that with Game of Thrones. Um, this is not going to make sense, but it will. Um, I don't watch Game of Thrones. Yes, I'm part of the one percent that doesn't watch Game of Thrones. But you don't be, you yes, don't be saying of, it. You yeah, I want to be part of the ones that make a post and be like, "Ooh, what's this Game of Thrones? Nobody cares about." Okay, okay. <laughs> so the first episode started, and all these characters are seeing each other for the first time in years. Mm-hmm. But we've been seeing them for a sure. long time, and the, the writer was like, "This is going to be kind of frustrating to you guys who have seen them, but you have to remember these characters haven't have seen, seen each, each other. other." So in our arguments, in your mind, that other person is playing a role. They are almost purposely doing sure. that. Because you, oh my God, here they go doing that again. Yeah. But in actuality, a lot of times you haven't even told them that that bothers you. Most of the time. And now you are holding them accountable for something they don't even, they're not even aware of. Yeah. So when you blow up like you did to Kevin, and he's such a nice guy, <laughs> uh, you're mad at them or me or the person for each individual occurrence. And that, some of those things could have been curbed. You know, I remember Absolutely. one thing you were making me, uh, you were, I think we talked about this before. I was asking you, like, the way you were responding to me was coming off as disrespectful. Mm-hmm. And you were like, oh, I really just can't hear. Yeah. Like, I really couldn't yeah. hear you. So my the way my face is, is more like I'm frustrated that I can't hear you yeah. than what you were saying. But I hadn't said it. I had let you do it, like, three or four times. And every time I was like, man, she don't respect me. She don't this. She don't yeah. that. So when I finally said it, you were like, oh. Then you stopped immediately. Right. And that like, goes man, back to said, creating problems that don't exist. Yes. Because then you are interpreting that action and it will also color every interaction that we have thereafter. Right. Because if you believe that fundamental she doesn't respect me, anything will be looked through the lens of she doesn't respect right. me. Um, and that, and again, that happens a lot. So if I don't say something and I believe, oh, um, he thinks I'm dumb or whatever, every interaction will be through that lens. Yeah. And then what happens is somebody, does, the more upset you are, the less the actual perceived action makes sense, but it all gets classified in that oh, thing. Oh, for sure. We talked about this when I remember I said, I was trying to help you with something at a soccer game and you were like, I want you to know I'm good at my job. Yeah. And I was like. What? What yeah. is that? Okay, I didn't never said you were bad at your job, but that was coming from the underlying feeling of um, I was like micromanaging you. Or I don't mm-hmm. remember what what you were really upset about. There's so many different reasons. <laughs> Hats back on. Um, okay, done with that one. Next one. Another reason why I believe arguments escalate is because we have trouble effectively and accurately communicating our feelings. Uh, this is a meme that I saw. And it said, instead of expressing your anger, explain it. Mm. That's hard to do, though. Because you don't always have the words to say, this is why I'm upset. These are the things that made me upset. You don't always know, like, to pinpoint that. And so it just comes across as, you know, whatever. I was going to say like dishes being thrown or whatever it is. Like you express that anger because you, it's, it's there, but you don't always have the language to say it. And that's how, again, arguments can quickly escalate because you're not using your words. You're using other things. That's a, that's a good point. I think one thing I've been working on, um, lately is trying to explain my feelings as I am feeling them. Mm -hmm. And that forces you to a, 
a, a part of yourself, at least for me, that I'm not always prepared to yes. process my feelings in real time and explain them. To be honest, sometimes we just want to be mad for a minute. Yeah. And and I think that's okay, too. Yeah. Um, what's a healthy way to do that? To Don't let, take it out on me. Oh, but yeah. But if you, I, I believe that, um, oh, we said this before, emotions and feelings are real. Yeah. You just don't want to be controlled by them. Yeah. So yeah. it's okay to be angry. Like, that's an emotion. You can sit and feel that emotion. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean you need to express it. It doesn't mean you need to take it out on me. Mm-hmm. You're tired. No, no. <laughs> I am tired. You are. I'm on vacation. <laughs> We're almost done. Go. Would you have anything else you want to say? Repeat that point one more time. Not being able to effectively or accurately communicate. I think as a man, that's a little more difficult because your whole life, you're kind of not allowed to express your mm-hmm. honest feelings. Okay. Even going back to stop crying, stop acting like a baby, stop being shy, yeah. what you're scared of. Like you really aren't. You're taught actually to repress those feelings. Yeah. So like with Zay Zay, um, he's going through this age where... His friends are becoming more important, mm-hmm. and his interaction with his family is less, less important. So we're in Hawaii, and I was, I, as a parent, I was trying to mind the way I you were doing. This. You did good. Uh, we were in Maui, very expensive vacation, and he was, in his words, bummed out mm-hmm. because his friends were back at home in Santa Monica having a beach day, and I was like, in in my mind, I'm like. Y'all little funky kids want to be in Santa Monica Beach. You've been there a million times. And you want to be sad about that? Yes. I don't pay, I'll, I'll send your butt home right now. Sit with the babysitter and go, <laughs> go with your little stanky friends for one day and then be sad because you won't wonder what we're doing. But I allowed him to feel his feelings because I remember the age when my, it didn't matter what my family was doing. Yep. Anything with my friends was more fun. But I allowed him to be sad. You did. And I was like, hey, man, do you want a hug? And he was like, yes. <laughs> and he didn't cry. But he, his eyes were well. His eyes were well, and he took that hug, okay. and I just held him for a minute. And I said, "You know, it's perfectly understandable to be mm-hmm. upset that you can't be with your friends. Absolutely. I know what it's like. You know, they're all hanging out. He's you know checking his phone. They're texting. Ah, oh, yeah, they, they love. They're, they're having the time of their having life. Having the time of their life, and you're not there, and you know you miss out on stuff because you're you're out of town. That happens sometimes. You're allowed to be there. Had that been Kevin, the child. My mom would have oh, went Oh, that's unacceptable. off. So clean off about how much money they spent. Oh. About how your friends wish they were here instead of there. How ungrateful you are that you would rather be there instead of here. And how hard I work to how get you here. How hard they work. you want to see how much? I mean, my mom Pulling would still be Pulling out all type going, of receipts. Pull up the hotel receipt right now so you can see it. My mom would be going off to this day. And all that... Al- all that does is tell that kid, okay, so, well, okay, well, this is how I'm feeling. Regardless of if it's right or wrong sure. to the parent, yeah. that is the emotion you are really feeling. Yes. And when you're not allowed to express that, you're like, okay, well, now, the next time I ask me, you be like, nothing, yes. nothing's wrong. You learn to repress it. You learn to repress that. And that when you're a man, I was telling you this, when you were so mad, I was not being vulnerable. You're not being vulnerable. You're not going to talk to me. You're not vulnerable, vulnerable, vulnerable. Like, girl, I've been 35 years not being vulnerable with myself. Right. Somebody's always told me not to cry, not to care, not to be scared, not to do this. You're a man. You're a man. Not to lean into those feelings. Not to lean into those feelings. Not to feel those feelings. And now you're like, be honest with me. Speak though. I can't. Right. I have been literally trained not Not to to. feel anything. I'm a doggone soldier of emotion. Like, I've been trained not to feel anything. And, 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 uh, Lest we forget, some women, luckily you're not one of these, but some women use your feelings against you. Later. And yeah, you be honest, and, then, and this is why you're crying. This is yeah. why your dad wasn't there. Okay, you'll never get no honesty out of me right. ever. So what happens is um, it's hard to express those feelings because I haven't spent a lot of time understanding my feelings. Right. I just repress them. Not still to this day, there's some emotions I feel just like, nope. Yeah. You know, stuck with my real dad. I just repressed that. So I couldn't, even if I wanted, this is one thing that I think later on you finally got. Even if I wanted to express my feelings openly and honest with you, I can't because I'm not honest with myself. Right. So how could I be honest with you? I don't, I don't feel these feelings. It is a learned, it's a learned skill for you, for men or for you. And it's a learned, it's a learned skill period. I think for people. Yeah. Um, In general, you don't want to, it's scary sometimes to be like that honest. And yeah. raw and real with yourself. When I had to admit to you, I'm I, as a husband, provider, and man to say this scares me. Right. 
this thing that we're doing, I am scared mm-hmm. of it. It was so hard. Yeah. You're like, this is what I want you to say. Like, girl, I, if I said that out loud, then that makes it true. Right. So I just spent my whole time being like, nope, I'm not no. scared of nothing. Right. And I'd be scared. Right. You know what I mean? So one thing that I'm really working on with the boys is is undoing that idea if that's what makes you a man. Mm-hmm. Not feeling feelings. Because that stuff is so hard to Yeah, and undo. it just try, it just makes it hard for their wives. Yeah, I'm just like, bro, if you need to cry. cry. And the funny thing is when you were a little kid, you fought, hurt yourself. Your body's natural reaction is to cry. Yeah. I don't know what the chemical reason is. Yeah. But we are fighting against our own natural inclination mm-hmm. to, to, like, yesterday we were on the helicopter. Zay Zay was freaking out. Mm-hmm. Like, and rightfully so. Yeah. We were all a little scared. And I remember it was, a, it was a great following moment. I just put my hand on his leg. Yeah. And he, and he calmed down. <laughs> I put my hand on his leg. He's just like. And I was just like, man, that was cool, fatherhood thing. Yeah. I didn't have no reason to say it, but I just did. <laughs> it was just cool to be like, uh, well, actually, I remember why I said it. He was scared. I was like, Dad, I, he's like, I'm scared. And he's like, you're not scared. I was like, I am. Yeah. I don't know what about this makes you think just because I'm big. I ain't been in no helicopter either. Right. So just being honest with him and letting him know that I'm scared about stuff, it's a lot easier to feel those feelings if, you know, I'm Absolutely. there too. You know what else is great about being emotionally honest? What? Being emotionally honest about your bed. <laughs> Whips, that was good. I'm gonna give it to you. Oh my gosh. Wait, so I second these transitions. But what I wanted to let you guys know is that purple is popping. Yes. Uh, We're getting the whole squad in. We got the Josh whole squad is in. in. Josh is in. Doe Doe is in. in. We got purple uh, seat covers at the office. Shout oh, out to we purple. We did. We did get the seat covers. They sent so us to all, them. All the things came in like right before we left on vacation, but our bed is officially in our bedroom. Oh, I forgot about yes. that. It came on when it we were came, leaving. It came the day, Sarah, or the day after we left. No, no, the day we left. We're at the, the we were left. at the airport. And they push the time. Oh, up. you're right, you're right, you're right. Yes, because Joshua was. With and us, we so. got our purple mattress. I can't wait to sleep in yes. it when I get home on Saturday <laughs> so night. So we will give you guys a first hand review. I am so excited. I got to see um what the seat cushion was made out of. Oh yeah. And the seat cushion was so I I was like, oh, we get to, we're about to be sleeping Sleepy, on something that is so this comfortable. Imagine the seat cushion on top of like three different three inch layers of like memory foam. Oh. Um, we're excited. Yeah, I'm so happy. I cannot wait to lay down in, in there. In, in case you're new here, we are fans of, of purple. Um, yes, we are all fans. Firm we, and soft is the key for, to purple. And cool. Mm-hmm. And oh, stays cool. Oh, so yeah. when I tell you, this being married to Melissa is to sleep sweaty. Oh, that can I, never it, be. I'm cold. We're in Hawaii right now, and I have a blanket on. Why? Because I'm cold. And it's perfect weather. Oh, I cannot wait. So to we are mattress. super excited. We want to tell you the points about Purple Mattress in case you're new here. Um, and if you are, you should go back and listen to our old episodes. So the Purple Mattress will probably feel different than anything you've ever experienced before, before because it's used with brand new material that was developed by an actual rocket scientist. Mm-hmm. Shout out to you for using your skills for the greater good. We, mm-hmm. we all can't go to the moon in a rocket. We can lay down on a great mattress. And we thank you for it. <laughs> uh, it's not like the memory foam I'm used to, Joshua's used to, Doughboy's used to. We are soon to, and our bad bed is a memory foam. I our know. current mattress. And I'm excited to use it because. Our old mattress. Our old mattress. Mm-hmm. Because um, I have neck issues. I go to the chiropractor, my back be hurting, my arm gets real achy, and I get. Um, it almost feels like it's um, tingling, tingly, yeah. or like vibrating in my arm. It's kind of age. So I'm hoping purple is going to help me with this. Um, the purple mattress feels very unique because it's both firm and soft at the same time. So it keeps everything supported while still feeling very comfortable. Plus, it's breathable, so it sleeps cool. Joshua has attested to all of these claims. Dope boy's um, life changed because he went from a trash mattress to a purple mattress. Yeah, he'd been needed my mattress. So this, this and was Josh good too. Tidy. Josh was sleeping on a, a Domino's pizza box. Top. <laughs> <laughs> As a little table. Yes. Josh, when he first got it, the funniest thing happened. 
we called, we were texting Josh one night, and I was like, Josh, what happened? We were texting. He was like, I went home. He said, I just sat on my bed. It was sick. I didn't even lay down. I woke up. It was the next day. 16 hours. <laughs> He's not. That mattress is like, come on, lay come, down. Come, come, come here. Come here. I was joking. I said I almost returned it. My productivity plummeted. <laughs> Josh, the episodes have been late, delayed. Like, what's wrong, Josh? I, it's been, I've been sleeping right. for 14 hours. I, I can't, I I can't <laughs> get out. I can't get out of the bed. That's hilarious. <sighs> so you get, what do you get if you decide to get this mattress? You get a 100-night risk-free trial. If you're not fully satisfied, you can return your mattress for a full refund. That's mm-hmm. a pretty great guarantee. Backed by a 10-year warranty plus free shipping and returns. You're going to love Purple and right now with our um, and right now our listeners will get a free Purple pillow with the purchase of a mattress. That's in addition to great free gifts they're offering st- st- site-wide. Child, fumble, fumble, fumble. Just text love hour to 84888. The only way to get this free pillow is to text love hour to 84888. That's love hour, L O V E H O U R to 84888. Message and data rates apply. Okay. I'm excited for real, for real to try that bit. Um, okay, so the last thing why um, arguments often escalate is because of unspoken expectations. Lowered expectations. I've been on Kevin about this here lately because a lot of times in Kevin's, Kevin will give, um, ask for things and have a deadline in mind, but not communicate that deadline to you. And then when that deadline lapses, he gets anxious and upset because you didn't meet the deadline you knew nothing about. So I often tell, then he's like, should I check in? I feel like I should check in. And I'm like, what you should have done is said, hey, can you do this by I'm this out. date? I'm out this podcast. And he does it. Or I say the other thing, because the Kevin is a micromanager. I don't care what he says. Kevin wants to micromanage you. And so the other thing that I said, but he also feels bad about micromanaging. It's like this really weird situation that exists with him. So I said, you should just explain to people, I get anxious and I'm impatient. So what I will do is give you a deadline, but please don't be offended if I check in in three days. Or every, and I said this too, we have a staff meeting. During staff, I'm going to check in on these things because it is not a reflection of you and your work. It is actually a reflection of me because I am impatient. And that gives people the, okay, he's not micromanaging. He actually just can't wait. I'll just have an update for him. But he ain't done that either. When I didn't do that. I started doing that immediately. You a lie and the truth ain't in you. <laughs> you a big because a hog no better. Uh, but you, I think that is, and it, what happens is, and when he does it to me, I get frustrated and literally I'll just say, do you want to do it? <laughs> Don't ask me to do something and then follow up with me at 50, 11 times. Don't wait for me to fail, but also I don't need you to always like. But then what happens when you forget sometimes and you do? And that's what I'm saying. You wait for the forgetting instead of saying, Mm -hmm. oh girl, don't forget this. Oh, but if I check in and say, don't forget it, then I'm not Because you don't do it like that. How can I do it? Tone, Kevin Fredericks. How can I have tone? Fix your phone. (laughs) Fix your phone, fix your tone. (laughs) You literally just said, you check in your micromanager. So don't check in then when I fail, you didn't micromanage. No, because it's tone. You can come across as so condescending and you don't recognize it. How can I be have tone in a text message? How do you have... It's my interpretation of your tone. <laughs> because your natural tone is You're condescending. You're creating your own narrative. I like know. Eliza. <laughs> <laughs> I might admit some of that. Huh? I said I would admit some of that. Yeah. I admit some of that. But I in think... person, you do do that. <clears throat> and I think in general, we do that. Oh, now it's everybody. I always like to zoom out. Yeah, zoom out of my life and talk about <laughs> someone else. Talk in general. No, you always want to get specific until it's about you. Do you agree that you do that? What are you doing? I plead the fifth. I can either <laughs> confirm nor deny those allegations. Yes, I do. I micromanage, okay? Josh, what do you think? You get micromanaged by me? This is not the love I repeat. <laughs> You're one of the people that I manage. Do I micromanage you or do I let you live? I'm talking for Joshua. He he's trying to get a paycheck. And now, now you try to emotionally I'm brutally try- honest no, him. No, I'm not. I'm trying to protect him so he gets a check. He gonna get a check anyway. <laughs> Until I decide he ain't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give you an example. Here's a here's a thing. 
I mean, this is when Josh just gets concerns you, but but it has nothing to do with you. Excuse so me? Josh, right, make it make sense. Go Josh was example. late on a podcast delivery, oh, right? Yes. Uh, Aska, right? So I was like, um, uh, see, Melissa, see? And you were like, um, here's where she was right. That's why I didn't say nothing, Josh. <laughs> she was like, if you would like Joshua to give you five episodes at the beginning of the month, then you should just ask him to do that. <laughs> because if you don't, then he's not expecting to do that. He's just going to deliver once a time. And there's the thing that she said that really stung. She said, you expect people to be perfect and you yourself make mistakes. And you don't allow people the same grace that you often need. And I had to shut up about that. And that's why I didn't make no big deal when you made the... You know what's interesting, though? If it's going to be positive about me, keep saying it. No, if it's no, negative... No, this is, this, is a, this is a general scope of our previous employer, though. Oh, that's, yeah. That's a pattern that was just like... Instilled. Oh Wait, yeah. What do you mean? I don't at, help me at, with at, at, at previous. One employee. of the leaders at ADD. Okay. Uh, okay. We his, were going with previous employer. I mean, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you okay, can put the, you can put two and two together. That was his thing. Every, no one was. It, he never made a mistake ever in the world. Oh, gotcha. In the history of the world. Gotcha. No one else. Everyone else always messed up. No one else. And and people, when you don't admit your fault in in marriages or working relationship. People do not respect you because right. they remember when you mess up. Yes. And I know I and you I you had gotten on me about that one time and I just was like I had to swallow my medicine. I remember um you you do the travel for the tours and I don't even think you messed up. We just this early part of the tour sure. we had a time. This Marriott like, people had lot. promised this thing and then it was a lot. they had merged with another company. It was it just was like hell on wheels. We were literally walking around New Orleans like, please let us in the hotel. You're supposed <laughs> it was to supposed to be easier. You said we could come. Exact. It was much harder. Of easier. So you had not made a mistake. Well, something on the travel, I made a comment about it, and you were like, you didn't even give me the benefit of the doubt because they all don't know this, but last year on two occasions. I booked a hotel for my family in London for the wrong week and paid for a whole week. We contacted the people and they were like, no refunds. They were like, sorry, Charlie. Expensive. And it was expensive. And Melissa said to me, when you made that mistake, I didn't even add to your anguish because I know I couldn't beat you up nearly as much as you were beating Mm -hmm. yourself up. So I didn't say anything. But when I do something, you can't wait to say Here's where you did mm-hmm. X, Y, and Z. And I thought about that, and it was true. I had to take my medicine like Will Smith told Jordan Woods. You had to take your medicine because because you didn't say something, mm-hmm. I didn't even know you didn't say anything. Mm. I was reading this story, this wife and her husband. <laughs> it's so funny, but men would be so stupid. <laughs> they had a soap dispenser at their kitchen sink, mm-hmm. and they moved to this new house. And he said, man, you know what's crazy about that old house that I like so much? That soap dispenser never ran out of soap. This thing was always full. I don't know how that happened. That thing was crazy. And his wife was like, why, why would you think that I didn't fill the soap up? <laughs> what, what would make you think that the house automatic? Like, you really thought this was an automatic dispenser? Wait, that happened one time with the boys. I'm trying to remember exactly the circumstance. Where I'm uh, husband? No, yes. What? I'm the guy who didn't who thought that no, the house refilled the soap no, by soap. Yeah, no, but it wasn't you. It was like Joe, and I'm trying to remember exactly what it, what what it was. But it was something along the lines. Of, I'll just use this as an example because I can't remember exactly what it is, and I don't do this, so it wasn't this. But just as an example, he's like, "Mommy, how come every time I come home, our beds are always made?" Mm. And I was like, "It wasn't that, yeah, yeah, yeah. but literally, I was like, it's something that you've done every day." Boy, I'm doing like, right. who do you think? doing it was me that's who's doing it yeah Cersei I wanted you to know it was me yeah it was just funny but you're right and I think and I think that was the the point that I was trying to make then mm. is that I got a good example thing, for you when things go smoothly you take for granted the work that was put in to make it go smoothly Dwight in the office you remember when he quit and went to work at Staples oh yes and they were like why are the plants dying right and he was the one I actually who was, remember this episode watering the plants yes and because he did all this other stuff that bothered people, mm-hmm. people didn't appreciate the good stuff yes. that he did because he cared so much. And that happens in marriages so much. Yes. So many things that you do, especially that when you don't say anything, you don't like, when you're not trying to get credit for it, you're not looking well, for it. Well, and I think a lot of times it's not necessarily about you did this thank you. Yeah. Um, I, even on my like 
five love languages my my gifting of words of affirmation is actually low it's not it's not the lowest but it's definitely like the but after three it's like four or five it's probably four um so i don't need that type of affirmation but when things don't go smoothly or things don't go right or i just simply mess up i just need the grace to say all those other times were cool I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. And this is the, the benefit of the doubt. One time you guys were going through um, New Orleans and you were like, I know that they. this is how I read it. This was my interpretation. And this is a great one because that's not what I said at all. But not he, what I mean. it was Boy, like. you used old stuff on me so hard. Uh, we, you, we, I routed the tour through. Okay. This is what happens with Kevin. <laughs> he wants all the points on Delta. And also only wants to take direct flights. Nah, stop. That's not do, possible. Do, do, do. You cannot only take that Delta and then only do non-stops. Why? Because Delta doesn't have non-stops everywhere. No one has non-stops No everywhere. one has non-stops everywhere. Period. And so, Period. So trying to, and then I'm also thinking about the bot, like how much we have a ton of people we are paying mm-hmm. for, for their flights, for their hotels, like all of these things. And it all adds up. And Delta is not the cheapest airline. So trying to balance cost, trying to balance direct flights and trying to balance. What was the last thing? Well, probably just those time. Two. Oh, time. We get yes, there thank time you. To be at the show. And I generally want to get them there 10 o'clock or so. We're, we're talking about for the tour. I generally try to get them there, let's say before noon, um, to in their destination. So trying to balance those three things is not easy. Okay, those are not. Sometimes these three are in direct competition with each other. You can get there soon, but it's gonna be this much. You can get there soon, but it's not gonna be on Delta. You can get there on Delta, but it, they're in direct competition. It doesn't always work out. So they're going through through New Orleans, and I think you guys had a layover. It was an overnight flight. It was an overnight flight and uh, through Atlanta. Through Atlanta. And the way I read the text message was, or a conversation we had was, I know that there's a direct flight through um, New Orleans or to New Orleans. I don't know why we got it, why we didn't write, why, why weren't we booked on it? And I was like, okay, so again, these are the three factors that I have to consider. Would you like to do this? And I didn't even say what she just said. What did I you just, say? I just said there was, a, <laughs> first of all, this, when, when I say she's not, she's animated, she'd be like, I don't even be doing that. Just rewind this video and see how she just I spoke. am animated, but I'm not animated in real life. This is real life! <laughs> Why would you be animated in the story you're retelling, but not be animated in the story in it real life? <laughs> The story this is was it. about real life. No, the story well, was about real life, but I wasn't that way in the story. How are you going to re- be uh, animated only in retrospect? No, you animated this, in no, inspect this, no, this and is a retrospect. Re- no, this is a reenactment. <laughs> this is a dramatized reenactment. Okay, so anyway, what I said was I know there was a nonstop. I knew that. I know I had, in this situation, I knew what I had asked for, which was to fly Delta. So I know that's why we had us fly overnight. But because I had said s- stuff like that before, she read that as, I know there's a nonstop flight. Why didn't you put me on it? And all I was saying was like, I know the nonstop, I know the nonstop flight existed from another airline, but because I said Delta only, we did not get it. That's what I was saying. But that's why all them years of not saying it on the other stuff. Um, yeah, that time I said, I was like, listen. And I was like, and Kev be like, I don't, I don't care about none of the layovers. I don't care about none of the layers. Book me on Delta. Then they do a layover. This is the worst thing ever. <laughs> the worst. Oh bro. my gosh, we had to stop for three hours. Okay, okay. Are you done? Yes. <laughs> All right. So we have one last sponsor for today. Mm-hmm. Ain't no transition. I'm just going straight into it. Okay. Um, sure that is Open Fit. Girl. We have been using Open Fit. Yes. You have been using Open Fit. They have been really great. They are great about taking all of the complexity out of losing weight and getting fit. And the nice thing about them, this is actually what I love about them, what I'm using them for, you can plug in a very specific targeted goal. So whether that is a a vacation coming up and you want to lose X amount of pounds, you plug that in, they're going to target you to that. Mm -hmm. Whether that's your wedding. Whether that's it's a competition against your friends, a competition, whether it's a six week competition against your friends, if you're in the, the weight loss challenge with the guys, whatever it is, the nice thing about them is, um, of course, you want lifestyle changes, but also if you just have like, I just want to be fine for this event. 
Summer body. Summer body 2019. We're not in summer yet. So we got time. three months. Well, two months. What month are we in May, right now? May, June. You got about 60 days to your summer body. So if you want to if you want to go super hard. Eight weeks? Right now, yeah. No, Eight I weeks. Think that's good. You can go hard and open fit will help you. Like say I want to target my core or I want to target my abs they more have, than usual. Yep. Then they have workouts that are workouts they have that really are tailored short, for that. Um, workouts. They have extended workouts. They have uh, recipes. They have workouts with weights. Workouts without. They yeah. have all types. It's yoga, uh, which and, is a lot harder than you would think. And yoga can sometimes be embarrassing. Um, doing it in public because those motions and those moves and, and you'd be pooping. You'd be, Doing all that stuff. You, ain't, you ain't mean to. So you can all do this in the privacy of your own home, from the comfort of your laptop, your phone, your computer, your desktop, whatever. iPads. iPad. All of the the convenience of a gym at home. So um, Open Fit has changed the way I work out. Just use my code Love. That's L O V E. You can join me on my fitness journey, personalized just for you. Again, use my code Love and start using Open Fit for your journey to a healthier life. Right now, during the Open Fit 30 Day Challenge, my l- listeners get a special extended 30 day free trial membership to Open Fit where you can lose up to 15 pounds in 30 days. Man. That's actually really That's good. That's amazing. You need to do that. It'll make up for your, what you call it? What? For your vacation. Oh, yeah, because this week I'm out of here. <laughs> when you text love, that's L O V E to 30 30 30 30. That's three thirties. Text love to 30, 30, 30. You will get full access to open fit all the workouts and nutrition information. Again, they have nutrition information, recipes, child. It's, oh, it's legit. It's a one, one stop shop. Um, totally free. Again, just text love. That's L O V E to 30, 30, 30 standard message and data rates apply. All right. So those are the reasons why, um, arguments often escalate. Now we want to talk about interventions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is one of my um, favorite interventions. And I haven't had to use it, but I want to. So maybe I will soon. Um, The first intervention is to send a voice note to your spouse. Oh, I've been seeing this. Yes, and explain to your spouse or to yourself. Well, send it to yourself first. Obviously, record it, listen to it, hear your tone. It gives you a chance to make sure you're articulating yourself. It yeah. gives you an opportunity to make sure that your point is coming across, and then you can send it to your spouse. It's really good because when you are face to face, all you really <coughs> want to do is defend. Yep. I'm just waiting for the opportunity for you to breathe so I can cut you <laughs> off. And I can defend myself. I'll be saying my part now. Yes. Versus, you shut up. Yes, exactly. And that's what happens. Yeah. And then oh, all yeah. you're you're just trying to out yell each other and um a book i read years ago said you're wrong at the top of your voice you're never right at the top of your voice and what that basically means it doesn't matter how right you actually are the words that you're speaking how right they actually are if you're yelling you're wrong yep and your spouse will only hear the yelling and will automatically be defensive and you will get nowhere Mm -hmm. so um Try that technique. I think it's um, a really great intervention. We should try it. Absolutely. Next intervention. Um, learn to take a break. Hmm. I think that because the Bible says, hmm. don't let the, the don't sun let your sun set on your anger. Thank you. I was about to say it backwards. So thank you for. Anger set on your son? Yeah. That's what it's about to say. <laughs> hey, son, don't, don't set on my anger. <laughs> anger you you land somewhere else right. not on the sun like, hold on a second that doesn't make sense um <laughs> that we i think as christians we believe that which and i'm not saying that you have to go into the next day upset yeah. i, I was I this person do believe you remember yes but i do believe that we have to be careful that even in our arguments that we are still honoring the institution that is marriage that we believe god created yes and a lot of times we'll be arguing and thinking we're honoring the bible because we can't go to sleep upset but i'm cussing you out <laughs> make that make sense oh it man. doesn't this so, is a biblical cuss yeah, out right it's a biblical <laughs> cuss out because we i'm finna cuss you out and not go to bed mad no right. it's okay to say i'm upset you're upset let's take a moment mm-hmm. take a breather separate and also what that allows you to do when you are upset um uh, what was the Nicole talked about this 
bio like chemically when your adrenaline is rushing you can't really even think straight right. and so you are just spatting out, out the mouth and not you are saying things you may not mean yep. like you don't really have an opportunity to like fully digest what you're thinking and communicate that effectively Absolutely. so i think that learning to hey i need a break let's take a time out let's take a minute pause and then come back. You regroup. tried to do this early in our marriage, and I was not. I wasn't doing it on the biblical reason that mm-hmm. helped my argument, but, but because my family didn't believe in that. Mm-hmm. And and I remember you saying, "Listen, Kevin, I don't want to talk about this right now. I need time to think and process my feelings. We will talk about it in the morning." Because what also happens, which is counterproductive in an argument, is somebody will stonewall. Oh, so yeah. if we con- if you continue to berate me and I don't have an opportunity to process my feelings, figure out what I want to say, I'll just be quiet. Yep. And then that's really going to make you upset and then we're really not going to get anywhere. Yes. So you it's okay to take a break. And I think you you what was also important, you held to your word. Yes, and you, that's important. You too. did it and now uh, the uh, other part happens is sometimes we go to bed you, when we were having our rough part it was three four nights mm-hmm. feeling like it was uneasy but I felt like sometimes if you're like you know uh, you're not getting anywhere positive you actually can just end up making the situation worse by trying to force a conversation because sometimes right. even as you know depending on who the person is sometimes you just it's hard to process your feelings and c- talk about them you're right so sometimes you just need to okay let me just download feel how I feel yes. Maybe play some video games, take a walk, take a drive, go for a swim, work out, you know, talk to, you know. Or, and sometimes it's not even necessarily that I need to um, process my feelings. Sometimes you just need to release some of the tension. That also can be. Maybe I know exactly what I want to say to you, but if I say it right now. It's not going to be a good situation. Same I got a say. good thing. We've been playing wordscapes because Josh showed us this yes. word game. Mm-hmm. And essentially it's a word game like any other word game. Mm-hmm. But you're trying to guess these words. And sometimes I'd be looking at these letters and I just cannot find the, this word. Yeah. It's like one word. I just can't see it. I found that if I just turn the game off, so true. go away from it, so true. come back to the game, that word be like, so how obvious. did I miss it? So it's obvious. been right. Count. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be like, ain't no word ends in NT and the English language. No word ends in NT and has a U in it. Open back up. Count. Count ends in NT and has a U in it. And sometimes you just need to. Mental break. Mental break. And that happens in your relationship. Because you'd be starting to. I mean, you argue a lot. You start to see the worst of that person. Yeah. You're like, man, why did I even get married? This yes. person gets on That's my nerves. That's another um, counterproductive. When you don't, it's contempt. Yes. And contempt yes. is when anger and disgust meet. Ooh, disgust is such a like, blech. Yeah, you that's contempt. Me. Yes. And that can happen. If you just are always feeling like that, you start you you stop seeing the good parts of them. You start stop remembering the good times, and it's just always anguish. Yes. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Poor unfortunate soul. All right, last one last is because um, Kev's tired and I'm hungry too. Um, we said learn to exploit. Oh, oh! I said this earlier. Express your anger instead of. I'm sorry. Express your feelings. Explain anger. your anger. Oh yeah. Explain instead your anger. of expressing it. Um, and that's it. I guess we talked about that one earlier. Nice. Anything else? Do you have any other things you want to add? I. I'm really happy. Good. I'm really happy that we did the love hour consistently. I am too. It takes a lot. To I wish I would have counted them. I need to start doing that. Episode numbers. Oh, yeah. We've done pretty much four every month. Yeah. So, 20, 30, 20. But okay. I know. I think it's great. I'm really excited about the conference. Come soon. The conference, yes. So, this will come out on Thursday, April 18th. 18th. Yeah. Um, and so, if you are not and you are listening to this, I would highly recommend that you join the Love Hour mailing list. Text the word Love Hour to 555 888. Again, that's Love Hour to 555 888. Um, you want to be on the mailing list by Friday. Okay? Major key. Huge hint. Be on the mailing list by Friday. Also, be st- stay tuned for a very special episode that will also drop on Friday. That's April 19th. Um, 
yeah, stay tuned for that. It'll be a very special episode. It'll be short. It won't be like the bonus episode of the old episodes. It'll just be a very short conferency type episode. Um, and that's it. Make sure you guys support our sponsors. Remember, um, supporting our sponsors is supporting us. That is um, Noom. Noom, Purple, Open Fit, Get Healthy, Get Fit, and then Sleep Good. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We'll see you next week. Bye, friends.